Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Saturday Morning Cartoon Podcast. I'm your host, Dougie McDoubles, and today I have my greatest best friend of all time, 37 now and O of Greatest Little League Fights with Dads. I'm telling you, it's Ray McFlurry II, and today yeah. we have the problem solver uh, himself. We have the legend, the legend indeed, the mustache, Mustafari, the big haired man, the massacre maniac. We have Slim Dan himself with the biggest song right now on social media, Problem Solver, and his newest album, Second Dinner, live from Mom's Office. Everyone check it out right now. Slim Dan, how are you, my handsome friend? Oh, my word. I am electric right now. After that thing, I'm all gassed up. You kidding me? Ah. It's an absolute pleasure to have you on the podcast, my friend. Uh, thank you for taking the time out of your busy fucking day. Um, you are obviously all over TikTok. You're all, you are hitting the viral button, my friend. You are hitting that viral G spot because I'm seeing you everywhere and everywhere and everywhere. Um, so I just, we want to know, first of all, thank you for taking the time out of your day. But tell us the origin of Slim Dan, my friend. Sure. Um, so how old are you guys? I am 27. Ray will be 30 in a month. Yeah, I'll okay, be 30 cool. I'm right. I just turned 29 yesterday. So oh, wow. I was Happy big. Birthday. Thank you. I was a big like AIM guy. Like, I don't know if you guys were doing the AIM thing. Yeah, some, some AIM. Okay. Right. So Somewhere. I feel like a big part of like that my childhood was or like being a child in that era was like picking your screen name. And uh, I was obviously like the biggest Eminem fan of all time. So slim shady and then my name is danny so i was like slim dan and i was nine years old so obviously oh, like wow. that's gonna go on then so slim dan nine technically and then i lost the nine but so i would say the origins really date back to i don't know 20, 2005 or something like that but yeah. um i just was doing music all the time and then i when i was picking a name for it for this latest iteration of the project i was like Slim Dan kind of feels right, so I just went with it. Absolutely, I love it. It's it's a great name, but I would never would have guessed it was like an Eminem. That that really kind of takes me by that, surprise. Like, <laughs> the fact you said it's an AIM yeah. is insane. I have a friend named Chad that was that he cringes at his at his old name, and it was <laughs> D A like Duh Chosen One. Oh, yeah. So it's just like, you know, you have moments like that, and then you have the greatness of Slim Dan. That's insane. Um, Listen, don't sleep on the chosen one, though. That also, that, you never know, man. <laughs> that's a good battle rap name. You know what I mean? That was a sick battle rap name. Wow, that's so funny. Yeah. yeah. But, it's kind of rap- like how it started, I would say. Yeah, Back. yeah. So you said you were you were making music. Uh, you were just always always making music. When did you first start writing your songs? Um... I started writing song songs probably when I was like 11 years old, just like any other kid. Um, And then I was doing it throughout high school. And mind you, these are all like terrible acoustic guitar, like, you know, what rip off of whatever whatever I was listening to at the time in college. And then I started taking songwriting a little bit more seriously. And then um, I moved to LA after college and I actually became a quote unquote professional songwriter, whatever that means. I right. write for other artists. So I've been doing that for a really long time. So I would say I really started writing songs in like 2017, maybe when I was like getting paid to do it a little bit. Uh, so getting to LA, writing songs, uh, are you able to disclose any artists that you've helped write songs? Yeah, for sure. Um, I've written for, let's see, like, the first real song I had come out was with this artist named Sasha Alex Sloan. It was a song called Older. Um, and then since then I've worked with like Diplo. I've worked with uh, Nessa Barrett. I'm like thinking Steve Aoki, Kid Dan CV. I mean, I work with artists like I, I still do it. It's like one of my favorite things to do is to kind of lock in with other people and sort of like help their vision come out. So I did that for a long time before I started putting my own music out. Do you enjoy that more than writing in? producing your own music or which one's like your favorite thing to do i don't know if there's like i think like the umbrella is like writing songs like i love writing songs and i think it just depends on like where i'm at or what i have to say or like how long i've been doing one i feel like Mm. it's really nice to be able to like jump from one to the other like kind of go hard for a couple weeks on one Mm -hmm. take a break or the other thing it's like a nice refresher so every i would say it depends on when you ask me but i I would even out and end I respect that. Uh, just to get it out of the way, because I, I got to know, how much is a Slim Dan feature worth nowadays, my friend? <laughs> uh, 
I think I quoted somebody ten thousand dollars in Taco Bell gift cards on TikTok one time. So oh, like, that's the going rate right now. Hey, don't I, fuck with me. I was a breakfast manager for three years. Man. Uh, <laughs> hey man, my my homegirl is a manager right now at a Taco Bell. I will I will try. I will get you a local sponsorship. <laughs> Let's talk to corporate man. Let's talk to HR. Let's see what's going on. Let's you know make saying? it happen. D- Doug needs that Slim Dan feature. He needs it ASAP. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, so w- you have been uh. You've been in the music industry for for quite a while, my friend. Uh, what is your favorite song personally that you've written? I'm gonna, I want to get all of the basic, generic yeah, in no, questions sure. first so we get into the nitty gritty of Slim Dan. What is my favorite song that I've ever written? That's a great question. Um, oftentimes, I don't know about you guys, but I'd imagine if I was like, what's your favorite interview you've ever done? It's like, for me, the last one I did is usually my favorite <laughs> at the time. Just no, because no, it's exactly. got my like, hype on. So, like, I feel like the last song I kind of wrote that came out was this song called Wimbledon White for my album. That was the last song I wrote. Okay. Um, and I would say right now that's my favorite just because it's the last one I finished. So, let's go with that. Okay. That makes sense. And obviously, what is the uh, the worst song that you've uh, that you've released? And I'm written. I, I, well, let's, let's take released out of it because <laughs> what is the worst <laughs> song I've written? Um, like, cause I, cause don't get me wrong. There's a couple of songs I have that that if uh, I send to a homie in an email and he'll play six years later, I will, uh, I will turn into a shell of oh. a man. Oh, <laughs> uh, hold on. I mean, I I've written so many that like you don't. So part of being in LA, like as a writer, it's like you 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 have pitch days where you're basically like kind of shooting in the dark and like being like, let's write a song for Rihanna, even though she. She doesn't know you're writing a song for her, but you're just trying to get a song to Same. one of her people, so maybe she'll hear it. So I've written terrible songs. Um, I wrote a song called uh, "Virgin," <laughs> where I like, I like unironically was like, "I feel like a virgin." When oh. you, it was like basically like a virgin by Madonna, but the guy version, and it was so bad. Um, Oh my god, I mean I could send you a whole playlist of terrible songs. <laughs> it's dark, man. It's dark. There is one song I really like of yours called Celebrity Lookalikes. Um, and the way you write it, I think it's so interesting. I'm just curious. Are you like an Owl City fan? Because sometimes your writing really reminds me of how Owl City would write songs like on the Ocean Eyes album or like the I old... have to keep it uh, I have to keep it a hundred. Like Fireflies obviously legendary song. Of course of course like maybe that has influenced i would say that era maybe more than specifically uh owl city sure um like i would say i was more maybe paying attention to like say anything yes oh, I, like yeah, that I say anything. um that are like similar in the pop punky vein, but out mm-hmm. vein, excuse me but owl city i felt was always like a little bit more like computer poppy which was awesome i love like and I feel like that's kind of like with the whole Ben Gibbard thing with the uh, um, Postal Service, like it kind sure. of fell into that, which I love too. But um, the like kind of bandy stuff was what I was really listening to a little bit more, I would yeah. say. Yeah, but Postal Service and like Swimming with Dolphins, they were a little too like electronic but Al City was like, I feel like he kind of bridged the, the like, median there between like Say Anythings. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I really so, like Al City. Sometimes the, the lyrics of Say, of uh, Celebrity lookalikes. I'm like, damn, this is really. It feels like a song from that era. I guess I was like, it feels very Al City esque. But yeah, I really like that's, that song. That's when I can't. That's exact. Thank you for saying that. That's like a, the hugest compliment because that's like my some of my biggest influences writing wise are that era. So thank you. Dude, I, I can tell it comes out big time. I yeah, love it, man. It's it's, it. it's an entirely new nostalgic feel. Even though you're a new art, you're a newer newer artist. Um, it's, it's very, it's very exciting. I, every time I hear problem solver and I have it, I repeat, I played it six times today just cause when I smoke, <laughs> when I smoke a nice blunt, it's just, it's just so, so peaceful. How many times have people asked you, are you a Weezer fan? Um, I mean, I get that a solid amount. I would say, um, I'm, I mean, the blue album was so big for me the same way it was for all of us. I feel like we're all sort of of the same age. So yeah. like, yeah. Yeah, like Rivers is like the coolest fucking guy ever. Like he made dorkiness really cool. Yeah, he owned that shit. He owned yeah. that shit. Sorry, it's just my son. Okay, bye. I love you, hon. 
No, you're good. No we worries. had uh, we had to postpone a podcast last night because it was his Ray's daughter's bedtime. And yeah. we, you know, family no first. Worries. So if you got to take care of something right now, you're good. No, my no, my wife's about to head out. Hold on, let me just say bye to him. Real quick. Take yeah, your time. You're good. You're good. Yeah. Take your time. You have a kid. I do. She's gonna be six in less than a month. Oh hell yeah! Wow. Okay, so you're ahead of me. We're ours is seven weeks old right now. Oh my goodness. Oh, <laughs> so dude, I remember are, that era. We are sleepless. Yep. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, let's just get this out of the way for sure. Then, thank you so much for Slim Dan for just yeah, uh, taking oh the time out of his legitimate busy schedule. <laughs> um, it's a whole different level being an artist, but the fact that he has a young child, right. an infant. Um, yeah, man, thank you for taking the time out of your day for a solid forty minute podcast. You're the, you're dude, a legend, no. even more so now. <laughs> Holy shit. Um, I love it, dude. Okay, so where were we? Talk to me. Okay, so you were talking about with Ray about Owl City, and uh, and we and we were talking about Weezer, and mm-hmm. yeah. genuinely, I can't help but just ask because every time I hear it, I just it just gives me the same in like enthusiasm, enthusiasm essentially. Um, the banjo and problem solver, it just gives me such a good feeling. The same way does same way uh, Kermit's Rainbow Connection does. I will, yeah, like, dude, it's it's <laughs> genuinely. Did did you guys make any jokes when you were making the song of being like like doing something like that? Because that's right here's Owl City, and all I hear the entire time is you just killing the best Kermit banjo of all time. Okay. Like, <laughs> um, what is who? What is the guy's name playing the banjo? Um, that's my buddy Pedro playing the banjo. So banjo, the the banjo thing with me has been interesting because basically, um. My producer, Ryan, went to a flea market <coughs> like a year and a half, <coughs> excuse me, a year and a half ago and bought a banjo for $120, I believe. Stop. And <coughs> all it said on it was high quality banjo. That was like the brand, which is like <laughs> become a bit for us. But it was in the studio. So I started lightly put. What? <coughs> well, let me think. You're right yeah, I'm all right. I feel like if you listen to the original recording of Problem Solver, it sounds different, right? It's a definitely diff- like versus the live thing. And I feel like over the past year, I've embraced the banjo more. And it was less of like a, I was looking for the banjo, but the banjo just kind of found me <laughs> in the studio. I love and it. And then I just kept putting it on more and more shit. Until I was like, fuck it. Let's just make a banjo version. Dude, it's great. Did you expect like the social media reaction to the problem solver? Like the live from mom's office version? Um, Hell no. Obviously not. <laughs> well, that's fair. I guess that's fair. What about the EP? Did you, was that always planned to drop? Or was that genuinely because of how many like comments you got about drop this version on Spotify? Um. Well, it's it was interesting because the story with the EP was, I think that like for a long time, I thought music videos were necessary. And then I realized that live videos translate so much more. And sure. unless you have like, unless you have the best concept ever for a music video, you're probably wasting your money at this point. Yeah. Um, and then the whole thesis for me became like, sort of the OK Go model. I don't know if you remember this group called OK Go. Of course, yeah, they have like the treadmill treadmill music video, video. yeah. Right? And I was like, that's scrappy, cheap, but creative as fuck. Right. That was the whole, and that's sort of the mentality and the philosophy behind visuals for me at this point. Mm -hmm. Is like, let's, we're not gonna spend a lot of money, we're not gonna waste a lot of time, but hopefully it'll be creative. So at least like, the mom's office idea presented itself because it was literally my mom's office and it was free. Ah, oh, damn it. Free. Oh, it genuinely is your mom's oh, office? Ah, there went a spoiler okay. question. Damn. I, I was going to ask. I was wondering if it genuinely yeah, was. Yeah, my mom's an OBGYN <laughs> in Tarzana in the Valley. And I was like, where can I record for free? She's like, my office is around. We're closed on Sundays. And Dude. I was like, you got we were, it. I That's incredible. I, I showed my girl this video. She was like, how the fuck does someone, is that a fake office? Like, no, no, no. It's pro- I was like, some offices are closed on Mondays or some. He probably did. I probably, they had a six hour window oh, to finish shit. that shit on a Sunday. We, we, I think we did a total of eight songs in five hours. So we oh, were wow. fucking ripping. Literally. So to, answer, to answer your question, I was like, if we get one song to sound good, we'll be lucky. 
You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Because, A, the acoustics are terrible in there. There's so much shit happening that we fit, like, eight guys in there. Right. Plus, it's, but like, Alex, one continuous take, right? Like, that's yeah. a crazy That's a crazy thing to do. We rehearsed it once. Like, literally, we rehearsed it once, and it once? just worked out. It was one of those freak things that worked out. Dude, lightning in a bottle. It's an incredible video. But... I was so pleasantly surprised to hear the recordings of it and be like, damn, this actually sounds pretty fucking good. And then I mixed it a little bit and I was like getting the feedback from online of people being like, these versions are fucking sick too. We want them also. And it Mm kind of just naturally, I was like, it made sense to put out a live EP as just a way to continue the conversation of the album. Maybe. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I love it. Is that uh, something that you're wanting to like go towards more like with, uh, with the next, uh, uh, the rest of your 2024, like with songs and things that you're dropping, do you plan on dropping more like live, sh- like live uh, versions as well? Yeah, I mean, well, I plan on playing more shit. So like, I'm about to go on tour in a week or two. Yes. Um, and then that's gonna be fun. And then we're planning a headline run for February for next year. So it's well, like incredible. I feel like live music is. I spent so long in studios, and I love being in studios. It's so fun for me. Um, and I've definitely toured a lot as a guitar player. I used to play as a guitar player um, uh, it was back in the day. And then I feel like I'm now kind of reapproaching this live thing off the back of these videos being like, I think people like this, this assortment or this ensemble that I'm putting together. So yeah, I'm definitely thinking about live music a lot. Definitely. So the, uh, all of the guys that, like played in your band in the video will they be is that like your band i guess slim dan is just you but what are they considered no, so those are kind of like all my like really good friends <laughs> really <laughs> okay yes. okay i yeah, figured so that's what it was the banjo after you said player the banjo pedro guy. pedro the banjo player is like probably one of the more successful like do you guys know what a mixing engineer is yes so he's a mixing engineer he does like huge records i've known him since i was 19 years old we he's one of my best friends he like will fuck around and play banjo with me. He's a phenomenal musician. The guitar player, Jeremy, I make records with all the time. He's an incredible producer. The bass player, like all these people, like between all of them, there are probably like 10 number one gold records or platinum records that oh, they've written or produced. So like these are all people that I just work with that also work on my music sometimes. And like we're all just really good friends and they're down to play with me. But I don't think I could convince them to like, leave la for a month to come oh be no i feel you I right feel you. yeah well uh just to get it you know i just out of the way if you do a southern tour you need an opener i'll uh i'll uh i'll venmo you or you know whatever. let's go <laughs> you know, you know, let's go uh, you know, let me it, know what your ticket draw is man i, I definitely need help in the south so fuck uh, yeah about a hundred people and that's about <laughs> so nothing close to anything you bring in in the slightest no. <laughs> but i will happily pay to open for you oh my gosh oh my gosh no that's more than i can probably sell so i might need you um because i'm i'm we dropped so I go by Doug we on, on Spotify and things of that nature, and I uh, I just dropped a new EP, but I mainly focus in acoustic and like pop punk, like Midwestern emo things of that nature. Um, we just finished my first tour this year, uh, completely independent. It was absolutely insane. Um, so I yeah I can I can only imagine you. I was I was like having Ray drive with me. I couldn't imagine getting six <laughs> more Rays, convincing them to be like, "Hey, man, I need you on this Friday, and we're going to drive for six hours. Can you do this?" Yeah. You know, so I yeah. I can comp- I completely understand. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> all right, man. I have one more question uh, about your music because we want to get into some nerdy questions and Spider Man topics and that kind of stuff. Uh, this one, I'm sorry to do this to you. You have a lyric from this song. Oh, yes. Uh, Wiener Schnitzel. We have been going back and forth <laughs> for the past four days because if this is, I told him this is not the case because obviously it's a utensil and how you have uh, engineered it. But if you use this, we believe jail time for you, my friend. This is a felony. You are a menace to society if this is true. You said 2011, those were the days. Milk carton bongs, below average grades. Now. Is that a real thing y'all did? Now, I understand <laughs> making a a, bo- oh, a water bong or gravity bong out of uh, Gatorade bottles, water bottles, even, even potato, milk jugs. An e- apple. Even milk jugs. Now, uh-huh. was milk the liquid you were hitting them out of? No, 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 no. Let's, okay. Let's all, let's all calm down for one second. Let's I just, all, I would like it explained. That's let's all, all relax for a second. I think that, I think... <laughs> The, the 
we're talking about an apparatus, right? We're talking about yes. something that a bunch of like sweaty, like fourteen year old boys in a basement can pass around. Sure. And, like you can take the biggest rip. Fact. The water bottle thing obviously was all over that with the aluminum foil. Yeah. It always felt a little cracky though. You know what I mean? Like, cause it was like, yes. it would shrivel up and you had to tear the thing off. I think the milk, the milk carton was just like a little bit bigger in size. I'm not saying I exclusively smoked weed out of milk carton bongs, um, but we definitely put water as the liquid and did not use milk. Okay. Although, if I'm being honest though, hold on a second. Like maybe you left a little milk in there. Cause I feel like when we like, did you guys ever do like hookah? Was that ever a thing for you yeah, guys? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like I remember this this kind of like older man was like, yeah, you gotta put a little milk in it so it gets more like this. the smoke clouds are bigger. And I was like, really? So maybe I heard that at one point, but it was primarily water from what I understood. Okay, I under, okay, so because okay. I've used a milk jug as well, so I've had zero yeah. issue with that. Never done but that. I, I, I looked Ray in the eyes because he was like, but what if it was milk inside it? And my eyes got wide and I said, straight to jail. Dude, oh, I was like, I just can't get that, past that, the, the that, hot yeah, dairy little... smoke. I don't know. Even if you've washed it out, it would still be hot dairy smoke to me, man. Nah, so, nah. I don't know. Wa wa with water in it, it's fine. No, no, no. It, it, the, the, the... dairy smoke? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> even, even if you've washed it out and cleaned it, that'd still it'd be like taking a hit of milk. I don't know. Hey, dairy smoke, yeah. that, could be, that could be a new album for you, man. You know what yeah, I mean? Dairy smoke goes hard, damn. I'm going to get That's my right. tax refund and pay for a Slim Dan EP. It's going to be me and him together. It's going to be called... Uh, dairy <laughs> smoke. Dairy smoke. God damn it. Uh, okay, so first of all, you are an incredible... In unique individual, I have genuinely loved just getting yeah, to this know. This has been a great conversation. To know you, my really. friend. However, it's not over yet because we have the fan questions of the season of the interviews, and we want to know how nerdy are you, my friend? Are you prepared to answer them fully, honestly, with nothing but the truth and handsomeness? You may be disappointed in how ner my nerdiness levels, but let's 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 see what happens. It's all let's right. It. He's still a handsome man with a mustache. Uh, number one, Marvel or DC? Neither. Neither. What instead? Like, I here here's where I'm at, guys. Let's hear it. Like, I, I I appreciate the sentiment of this superhero thing. Like, I I fucking the OG like Spider-Man films and the OG Iron Man I thought was amazing, but mm -hmm. like, I just can't keep up with everything. And I have friends that think I'm so dumb for having this take, but like, I'm good with, I, I'm good on the Marvel or DC thing for the <laughs> yeah, most. Part. You need a master's degree nowadays to understand Marvel because there's seven shows that coincide with a movie that's both not going to do well. So it I feels, I understand. It feels more capitalist. Like I, I yes. would say, the boys. I go more the boys than Marvel or DC. Speaking of the boys, then did you ever catch uh 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 Invincible? Um no, what's that? Invincible is a cartoon and it is an animated superhero show on it on Amazon as well. Um it's in their second season right now. Um and it is a boys version because they made a, a boys diabolical, like the, the anthology animated series for it for like right, six episodes. Right. It's kind of like that just as fucked up. Right, uh, that, yeah, that because that so here's my thing like that at least is like we're a comedy and we're also making social commentary. Whereas I feel like these kind of modern Marvel or DC movies are like presenting as action movies, but like also doing like a weird brand of comedy behind it that I just don't quite fuck with. Yeah, no, yeah. you're absolutely correct. Without that. them, with them having to stick to a PG 13 rating and the writers aren't understanding comedy, but they also aren't allowed to read comic books, it's just a, they've made nothing but a stale vast of movies at the moment you're absolutely right um the boys yeah. is phenomenal did you watch the spinoff gen v i actually i have that down so i've been deep in like kid mode obviously but that's like my next thing that i'm gonna take on uh, uh, yeah that's right i forgot that you're an important you have, i'm sorry that you're a good father that's on me i I, for, <laughs> I do something called called happy roasting so it's just like oh i'm slim dan i'm a great recording artist and i'm a good father and you know i take I time that. for my kids i love know? that um, I have to know, you are 29, uh, you are in the same age range as us, you have been here for the entire pop culture, whether you are not in superheroes now or the nerdiness, you still watch some type of TV as a kid and some type of cartoons, you still had some type of crushes growing up, I need to know who was your childhood crush on TV, whether it be a cartoon, whether, whether it be Shingo from Kim Possible, we've gotten Jessica Rabbit, we've gotten incredible roles, 
Who are they? Oh, are we you? talking specifically cartoons? No, it it can be. I want both because we've had. Yeah, we, we've got Jessica Rabbit. We've got Topanga. Like we could go. No, Topanga Lawrence was was bad as fuck from Boy Meets World. Of course, facts. yeah. That's just that's just facts right there. Yeah. Um, who else? I feel like Topanga was probably number Aunt Becky from Full House. Also, like. Hey, my man knows what he wants, and I love it. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, Aunt Becky was was just I, I like I like the John Stamos thing. Like he's all over the place. He's a little bit more solid. Like that dynamic really, I feel like was was meaningful to me. Um, who's who's the Bugs Bunny? Who's Bugs Bunny's girlfriend? Uh, Lola, Lola from Space Jam. Yeah, Lo- Lola was from Space Jam. Was nice. Um, yeah, but I would say like Topanga, and then like I feel like Hannah Montana, like even the Hannah Montana thing. I feel like if they were too close to my age, where I just saw them as like friends, I would mm. never really had a crush on like Hannah Montana. Maybe like Lizzie McGuire at one point. Yeah, fair yep. enough. Yeah, that's, Lizzie McGuire that's is still on there. a solid one without a doubt. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe like London Tipton from Sweet Life. Ashley Tisdale. Like that. Yeah, a couple a High School Musical, something like that. Uh, yeah. who, who was your favorite Power Ranger growing up? Uh, I don't know if I had a favorite one necessarily. I feel like I feel like I watched the show and absorbed like probably zero of it. I wasn't really being influenced by that. But I remember, I remember the yellow one being pretty sick. From what I, yeah, uh, yes, I'll go with the yellow one. Let's say the yellow one. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, your favorite cartoon. Ooh. <laughs> Uh, Dexter's Laboratory. I feel like Dexter's was sick. Johnny Bravo was great too. And also Dexter's, That's a great era, Dexter's yeah. mom was also a baddie. <laughs> yeah. Oh, for sure. Was she the one where you never saw her face? No, that was the mayor's wife from Powderpuff yeah. Girls. Okay, that's what that was. Yeah, Powerpuff Girls was sick too. I love that show. Yeah, too. facts. That's a good one too. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. My my daughter went into a six month phase of Powerpuff Girls and then the reboot from like 2016 or something. Yeah. So God, I've watched so much Powerpuff Girls. Like it is, <laughs> it's a good one though. Oh, uh, so you are, you're 29. So you have seen the, the encompassment of Nickelodeon from the Amanda show and all of the beginnings of uh, Hannah Montana to Wizards of Waverly Place, Nickelodeon or Disney, my friend. Hannah Montana, correct me if I'm wrong, is Disney. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, it's a loaded question. Of that era, I feel like, but Drake and Josh is Nick, isn't it? Yep. Mm-hmm. Damn, that's a tough one. Exactly. It, it's a lot harder when you start to think about the sh- what was on each like uh, channel. What well, was like Danny Phantom? That was Disney. That was Nick. That was Nick. Uh, Timmy or Fairly yeah. Odd Parents, Jimmy Neutron, like Danny Avatar: Phantom, The Last Airbender, Avatar, like any Drake Ninja and Josh, Turtles. Amanda Show, iCarly, um, all that, all that, Keenan and Kel. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I feel like maybe Nickelodeon was a little bit more cutting edge, and they were kind of like they were. I mean, obviously, Nick- we now found out that there was a lot of other stuff that was. Yeah, fair enough. They had a, cu- they had a couple enough. other things they were really in their bag. They were really pushing it over there, which I do not condone. But yeah, no, I would no. say that yeah, maybe Nick has a tiny little edge over Disney. But I would say both powerhouses in their own right. Powerhouses, yeah. I respect it. Yeah, because at the end yeah. of the day, Disney Channel games was like the coolest shit ever as a kid. Like we all wanted to be there. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. Everyone, oh, without a doubt. <laughs> um. Okay. So, what was the one of your favorite shows from nickelodeon from disney and from cartoon network oh um let's go oh for disney i'm gonna say i'm just literally going through like a roll decks in my head of like hi this is so and so and you're watching disney Channel. no 100 percent. no 100 percent. I'm, I'm just thinking who i'm watching right now I, I feel it. let's go like let's go Hannah Montana because I feel like that was like a really as a music music kid that was like really sick for me to see mm-hmm. and like kind of live out my fantasy through her um Cartoon Network let's go was Johnny Bravo on Cartoon Network it was he, right he was yes yeah I'll go Johnny Bravo that was that was just a great show peak Damn right uh, it was. 
he was awesome. And then Nick, let's go Drake and Josh. I knew it. I, you had said you, would, Drake you brought it up also, earlier. Yeah, Drake. He was dude. Literally, like he was the coolest guy ever. Yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah. And that theme song. Doubt. That theme song to this day is just fucking chef's kiss i've put that on at multiple parties when people are already drunk and people will just start like jamming the hell out to to the drake and josh theme song take some time to realize oh it's so good we just got a little slim dance song in this battle i love it man let's go chills dude okay so before we get out of here i have one last question to ask you you have already said that you're not a real superhero fan however um, this is the most anticipated fan question of the season. So, who is your favorite Spider-Man? Tobey Maguire. That <laughs> that's the answer. That's the, it answer. Is the answer. I respect yeah, any, it. Anything else is like you're being dumb. Like yeah, you're opinion. being edgy. You're being. We get it. You want to be something different, or you're a fucking kid. You know, Tobey Maguire we're was like a short king and like wasn't really jacked or anything like that. Like he was just like he just did it. He did what he was supposed to do. He wasn't flashy about it. He wasn't glamorous. He wasn't dating a famous person. He was just Tobey Maguire being Spider Man, and, and it worked. It was the best. Oh, dude, it was awesome. so damn good. Yeah, those that whole trilogy is so fucking good. But now, then, before we get out of here, the final question: Since you've just announced that you were a little bit of a basketball head, who is your favorite team and player at the moment? Oh, so I mean, I'm from LA, so like, I'm gonna say obviously Lakers. Mm-hmm. I ride for Austin Reeves. I'm pretty sure. Isn't, is he an Arkansas native? He is. We were yeah. trying to get him on the podcast. Yes. So obviously AR, like of I've course. been talking about Austin Reeves for four years, guys. Like I, I have been, I remember he would get these kind of like trash minutes and I would be like, this guy knows how to play the game the right way. Period. This period. guy plays the game. It's a real gym rat. Right. Like you can just tell. He's not out there in the clubs. He just wants to go play golf with his fucking brother and then come back and hit the gym. That's and all like, there is in Arkansas. That's all where he's yeah, from. Man. That's all there is is just golf courses and just ba- and an old basketball gym from Hoosiers, it looks like. <laughs> 100%. So I would say Austin. Like, my team asked me who I wanted to work with for 2025, and I literally in that list wrote Austin Reeves. And they kept telling me he doesn't do music, and I'm like, I know, but I want to work with him. Somehow. <laughs> I want to I want to, I want to meet him. I love it. Yeah. That's I want him man. to sign my son's forehead. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh my gosh! I'm, yeah, exactly. Uh, oh, I that's great, yeah. man. Well, man, this has been great. This has been great. I love. Uh, you know, I found you from the obviously the problem solver on TikTok, but God, it's just spawned such a love of all of your music. I'm excited for everything you got going forward, man. Uh, my friend Brad texted me right before this, and he said uh, he had showed that. Uh, the song problem solver to his wife and she was like man the guy that wrote that he he really understands and brad said uh, he didn't have any any kind of questions for you but he just wanted to say that genuinely that song has helped at least one person's marriage very genuinely oh, so that's so uh, cool we appreciate you, you having me on man love you brad oh man that'll mean a lot to he's him. gonna love that that's he, awesome he also has a handsome mustache like you my friend <laughs> Dude. Oh, oh, yeah. Slim Dan, thank you so much for being on our podcast and taking the time out of your very genuinely busy day. We truly appreciate uh, you ch- checking on the little guys like us. Uh, you <laughs> chasing your dreams, man, means the world and gives us inspiration. Oh, we're, we're, we're all chasing our dreams. We're all going to help each other. That's how it works. Where oh, yeah, where can we find you? Um, is Because I know Slim Dan 9 is your Instagram, right? Yeah, I think oh. it's like slim dan nine for everything okay st- okay because i know you said you lost the nine in the beginning of the podcast i didn't know if that was still yeah, for yeah, no, my, my artist name on spotify it's just under slim dan but i think my socials have a nine in it still for me. Okay. Oh, okay okay perfect <laughs> um now with the new uh release obviously of uh uh of your new album i i gotta ask what uh give us a month when's the new when's the new song when's the new single give us a month Man, you you would think that I have like a bunch that I'm sitting on. My tank is empty, guys. Oh no, oh, wow. that's okay. Well, We're yeah, so you got excited. tour coming up. No, yeah, but, you got other oh, stuff to tour. focus on. What I can say is that I'm going to be touring a bunch, and that uh, I will be doing a deluxe album with a bunch of sick features. Um, oh shit! Any so, leaks? Uh, let's just say that. Uh, I say it. No, don't, no, get, no, okay. don't get in trouble. No, don't it's get okay. in trouble. No, no, no. You hesitated. Don't do it. Don't do it. We don't got, get in... we got like we actually got some like sick names, like people we were talking about before on this podcast. Right? I was like, we like oh, we only, man. you know what I mean? This we're not yeah, yeah, trying yeah, to get yeah. you in trouble. We, we we got some some sick features, features that like 
I thought like they have no business being on a Slim Dan album. Like they're way too cool for me. Um, As if yeah, I couldn't be more excited, dude. Holy shit. Yeah, so be on the lookout for that uh, early next year. We truly appreciate it, my friend. Thank you so much. Slim Dan, uh, thank you so much for being a good, just a good dude yeah, and man, a good guest awesome. to overall yeah. interview. You were just, you were a highlight of the day, my friend. Truly have Thanks the best rest of your day, buddy. Hey, what happened? Why are those squiggles on the screen? Those are called end credits, Patrick. End credits? But I don't want it to end.